Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, Google Cloud Platform Spanner and the first impression of using it. It's um, it's relational database from Google. It's um, horizontal, scalable, and so on and so forth. So I will share details and observations what I get while I had a short project with this technology. Let's start. Uh, the first uh, about me, I'm 35, maybe 36 years old. I'm not quite sure. I have one wife and three kids, and I have lots of experience with Java and also with Groovy and a bit with Ruby and different experience. Uh, you may uh, check my GitHub account for some samples or some code snippets or maybe some open source projects. And I have a blog with uh, some articles if I find something. So you may go there and read something interesting to you. Uh, regarding questions, you may ask them during presentation. You may interrupt me. And uh, that's OK. So that, that's clear. And samples I I take from uh, Spring Cloud GitHub. So it's not my invention actually, <laughs> but uh, I share my expression, maybe some hints and tips how to use it. So let's let's start. So what I'm going to talk about. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I'm going to talk about ACID um, because uh, it's uh, it's crucial for relational databases that we used to use on uh, our servers, but in the Google Cloud it behaves sometimes uh, differently because of trade-offs. So I, I will talk not about uh, ACID itself, what it is, but uh, what limitations we have on different uh, cloud storages. Then I talk a, a, tell a bit what actually is Cloud Spanner, and I describe uh, relations in, data, in uh, how relations in relational database mapped to relations in Spanner. So it's... Uh, uh, it's hard, hard going to be. It will be half of presentation. Actually, um, I will just talk, and the second part would, would be some show, uh, some demo. Well, uh, so as uh, as I told previously, I will talk about atomicity and consistency. Uh, I I don't uh, share any information about isolation durability because it's. Uh, uh, Usually, uh, pretty same for all the data Google data storages. So let's start with atomicity. And uh, the best picture I found about atomicity is uh, this because atomicity is uh, putting all Homer into the doghouse. That's what it's about. So. Atomicity violations on uh, uh, Google storages. It's uh, if we use uh, data store, we have uh, limited. We limited with 500 entities or 10 megabytes. Uh, we, when we use big table, uh, Google uh, documentation says that. Uh, we should not rely that two rows are updated atomically. They will be always updated separately, and it might happen that one update uh, goes fine and uh, one fails, and that's, um, that's its expected behavior that it might happen. So uh, they ask not to rely on uh, atomicity between rows in big table. For Google Cloud SQL, which is uh, also managed SQL server, but it's uh, like 
uh, smaller, it's not for example scalable. Uh, there are no limitations, and for spanner, there are no limitations. Let's go with consistency. Uh, so I also show some examples here regarding consistency. If we have A plus B is 100, and when we at one point decrease A and increase B, then we have also this uh, result is consistent. So it, it should not happen that uh, one of that one of these operations happens and one not, and so it's it should be the data should be consistent in this case, and uh, also consistency from uh, Futurama cartoon. You may observe it on the right part of the slide. I believe that it, this picture hides because it's difference in ten seasons between these two pictures. So uh, let's. Let's check with Google Cloud. With Google Cloud, it's uh, very straightforward. Data store has a strong consistently and may be configured for eventual consistency. And Bigtable has by default eventual consistency and may be configured for strong consistency. All other data storage are strongly consistent. Why it, uh, you may ask, why we may configure for eventual or strong consistency for this first two data storage, why we should not use everywhere strong consistency? Because uh, the answer is because of performance. So if you uh, need better performance, but you don't need uh, really strong consistency, you may wait for while well, the data updated and showed correctly, so eventual consistency might work more work for you better. Let's go further. So uh, it seems that like Spanner is a just perfect choice for everything, but um, usually in engineering, the, uh, any solution is possible if you have enough time and money. So you have two engineering problems. You have not enough, enough time or you have not enough money. And Spanner is about, it's about money. Uh, the price is really, um, it's really expensive, uh, even for very small, um, very, very small instance. You, you, you need at least three instances and you pay for each hour of instance. It's, uh, the pricing is different from big table, for example, and so on. So it's, it's really, really expensive. It's so expensive that I turned it on my spanner only yesterday evening, just to not to spend much time to, uh, to not, not, not spend much money for the demo time. So uh, the price prices here are as follows. It's uh, one dollar per regional storage. Uh, per one node, and you need at least three nodes usually. So you spend three dollars per hour. So it's it's quite expensive. Uh, let's go further. And if it's multi-original uh, storage, it's uh, just a triple of previous cost. And uh, storage is not also cheap. It's uh, half a dollar per, per gigabyte, almost half a dollar and half a dollar per gigabyte for both cases. So it's it's really, really expensive. So as, uh, as I told you, uh, we need at least three nodes to get uh, necessary SLA. And uh, it's recommended uh, to list to, to, by Google to have at least three nodes. Uh, so, uh, what is Spanner? Uh, for, for, uh, there are no questions for now? No. Uh, okay, so um, Spanner is, um, as 
for Google, it's a enterprise grade distributed, strongly consistent database. It's a really dream. If you need relational database, it could scale as you need and when you need. It's really have good uh, availability and uh, performance. But uh, it's only tool and uh, this tool should be used correctly to have such scenes in your applications. It's really possible to kill performance of uh, spanner with a uh, wrongly designed schema and uh, um, really not not fine-tuned qu queries. So let's go to the demo. And I switch to my uh, idea. Yeah. Presentation. Okay. So, um, application is really simple. So, this uh, we start with a very simple application and uh, we will go deeper and deeper with uh, data mapping. What we need for, to start, we need a spanner database template and maybe I'll show you, sorry. Sorry, 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 I just forget. Okay, I just forget. Okay, so uh, I believe that it's uh, quite visible because it's not a, uh, it's on a screen, so it uh, would be convenient to use. Uh, there, is, there is some list of dependencies here. We use Spring Data Spanner, and we actually use Spring Data in this application for them, and we use Lombok to just to reduce code code size and we will uh, step by step do uh, some mappings. So, uh, the most important thing for, for the beginning is uh, here. Uh, in application properties, we should con configure project ID. However, it's optional. Instance ID of uh, Google Spanner database, database name, and uh, these credential scopes are also optional, but I like to use them. You may also configure here location of uh, service account key to, to connect to Google Spanner, but you also may use this environment variable. So the, that's how it looks like. On a console of, uh, on the web console, you see that Spanner have this spanner instance and we have this database uh, if you need another instance it's straightforward you just can create the instance and set the name set that it's regional set that set zone and number of nodes that's all with regard to service account uh, you have to you have to get this uh, key um, so you, you can just go to service account, find, uh, I use this service account. If you need some, you cannot read, read and load this uh, key, so you just can create new one. For example, like this, create and and just download it. So th th that's pretty straightforward. If you need access uh, manager roles for this service account, you can go to AIM and also add roles for this service account here. So it's also, um, I add a lot of roles because I played before demo, so it, it, it could be 
much less roles here for this demo, but I add more this time. So that's how it looks like. And we can just launch our application and see how it's going on. takes a bit uh, something around from 10 to 20 seconds to start so wait okay seems that it's launched and while we, we can go to to spanner okay uh, i can just do like this to search it Again and again. And in the demo database, we may see, actually we see nothing in demo database and that's okay because we have no mapped tables here. So let's, let's move forward and fill with the, with the data. Okay, what we added here, we added repository. Let me see, let's, let's go with regular mapping and this guy, dude, will help us. Uh, we'll just create simple bin Lebowski and with the UUID and quote of, from the movie. And we should get a schema like this, like on my right side. Uh, what we added here, we added repository. And it's, it's empty, it's a spin data, it's also pretty straightforward. Uh, we, we shall add here only create table. It's uh, like, a, so, like from sample, we, we, we check if table exists and we execute DDL statement with uh, entity class that we provide and we provide this class Lebowski. And uh, we provide a table name to create it. And then we just add 100 values and save it. It's really, really simple application. Yes, I, I put everything into the system stream, uh, system console, so we will see that the 100 of quarters is created, and we, we should see them here, and then we check if they are in Google Spanner. Start a bit longer than the row, but I believe it's it's already here, so we just can do some refresh like that and see if we have everything in place. Well, we have table. That's fine. We have schema and we can check the data. What we, we have in the data only one row. However, we had enough quotations and we have only last saved in the in table. That's happened because we did not specify that we uh, have a key. There is no key here. So let's add it. 
let's move forward with our sample. Let's move forward with our sample and uh, I am looking for the key. I believe the key is here. Yeah, now we have a primary key. Let, let's just launch again. Let's just launch again. Sorry. And Well, um, I created slides in case uh, something went wrong with the de demo, so they are just duplicate what you saw on the screen. Now, after the deal state, uh, statement uh, run, we will see this update that ID now is a key and we will see all 100 rows. Let's go here and can I just refresh it? It's still running. I have to wait. I have to wait. It's still running. Actually, uh, despite the spanner is fast, the scheme update is uh, takes some time, usually. So be ready for that. The scheme update will take a lot of time in, in case you need this scheme update. So just avoid them. Now we will see the data here, I believe. Yeah, we see this is the schema is changed and we see a lot of data in place. Yeah, that's as expected. So we may go forward. It was a pretty simple. Now we can go uh, deeper in fine tuning and uh, reduce string size. It also can help us with performance questions. If you, especially if you, you often use this field like the keys, please specify uh, length of the strings and so on. So let's go here with our demo again. So in, here in entity, we just specified what I told you, and we can just run application again. Meanwhile, the trying, let's go a bit further. Okay. That's uh, the, the, the next sample will be regarding one to one mapping. We will add actor entity into Lebowski class and we'll see this exception. Let's check what's going on with our schema and with our table. Schema is still not updated, so it's, it takes some time, as I tell you. Okay, we have dropped table, we have the created table. Now it's okay. I still wait for the data. Yeah, data is going. Yeah, so 
now no, all data in place yeah again so let, let's now let's go to one-to-one -one mapping and uh, let's see how we can avoid this later on so actually the code is a bit bigger here because we create two tables and then we fill it with quotas so let's 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 go Okay. Here our exception. That's yeah. That, 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 that's what I talked about. That we cannot map this time, and we cannot create DDL string for this because Spanner that doesn't support such kind of mapping. So let's let's see what we can do with this. We can just let's go with a simple one to many mapping. We just but but we we, we do not have this um, benefits from the sprint data. Just add actor ID here and here and see if we can overcome, overcome this. Actually, in this case, there should not be any limitations, but, but let's check. So difference is here that we get instead of actor, actor ID, and now we have actor in a separate place. By the way, while it's launching, it's uh, one important thing is uh, that might happen that you have set this environment variable for credentials, and then you decide, okay, I have to work with another project, and I can just use another JSON key, and I just recommend this thing and be okay with that. But uh, it doesn't work as uh, you might expect it because environment variable has higher priority. So if you have some things here in a property file and on a working machine, you have this environment variable set and environment variable wins. And it might cause you a lot of uh, painful debug because application will try to connect to another project in this case. So it's not obvious, but it's behaves like this. Also, you might notice that it takes some times for insertion 
for data insertion row by row, but uh, with bulk inserts, the speed will be the same. So actually it's not a, not an issue. So here we just have a lot of similar actors and here we have data with uh, actor ID. So everything works in this case, kind of mapping, but we have no benefits from the spring data in this case. Now we have go with the embedded data and um, usually it's Okay, we, uh, let, let's not go so fast. We just try to copy this scale statement. And we play a bit with uh, speed of queries. So in this case, uh, you see actual result of the query and you may see the explanation of uh, queries and how it collected. And uh, what you should uh, keep in mind when you uh, tune performance of these queries. The most important thing is that uh, this kind of map operations and this kind of input map cross apply operations. So uh, check them. It, like if uh, everything goes from the bottom to the top, from the bottom to the top, you may uh, reduce scope of query as much as possible on the lowest levels. So if you expect to work with one 1000 records and you expect to get in result 10 records so you have to build query in the way that you have the, the most of the unnecessary records are, are filtered on the first step before this map operations because actually these are might be a network uh, calls or uh, network data transfers, data transfers between nodes. So it takes, uh, it will take some time. Uh, because actually tables could live on different nodes. So please keep this in mind. And then now we can go with, uh, let's go to embedded case. Here we have Um, magic annotation embedded and we just obviously embed the actor into the table so it will be like um, like this one yeah we will have just big table with a redundant data And we will have some uh, actually pains with updating, for example, the Bobsky actor because it's it's everywhere. Yeah, but let's go and see how it works. Let's go and see how it works. And it works. It's usual fine. Again, you may notice that here we also create only one table for embedded case. It's obviously, but anyway, I have to mention this.
Let's see what's going on here. Although one table is created, and we wait for another tables. It takes longer and longer, as you may notice. Still no data because only schema is created. Okay. You may see CPU utilization is actually not, not under real load. We can just see latency here and so on. Another important thing is when you tune up queries for Google Cloud Spanner, and you may use the same request from time to time, from time to time, by selecting, the, for example, uh, data for specific IDs or so on. Uh, please keep in mind that uh, you tune performance of your applications, and Google Cloud Spanner also tries to put frequently called data closer. So it's, it's, I, I recommend you to use a couple of queries in this case, just not to not tune performance on a really optimized data. Just use different, different IDs and so on from time to time just to get rid of this. So with embedded data, it's also pretty straight, straightforward, but we can go further with the mapping and uh, the next. Okay, in this case, you will see that performance is really cool because we don't have any, don't have any, network calls. It's really fast. Yeah, it's really fast. It's about 0 0.67. Let's run a couple of times. Again, it's faster. The same query. Slower, so please. If you optimize performance, please check several times because the values might be quite different even for the same way. So let's go to the next option one to many. There are no actual one to many like we used to have. We have interleaved tables, and it's uh, it's also quite different. But uh, this ensures that tables live on the same node as well as uh, we will. We have to set correct keys for interleaved tables. I just explain it in details, but let's go to code. Because it's uh, really, really tricky place. So with interleaved, you have key in a top level table. And if you have another table, which is interleaved, which is Lower in hierarchy. In this table, you have to have you have to have two keys. Key from the top level table should be on a first on a first place, and on a second place should be actual your key. See in uh, in embedded case. Uh, let, let's go to to the regular case. 
you just have one key here and second key here just primary key and that's all and this in this case we on the top level have one key on the uh, second level we have two keys and it's i recommend you to use key order just to specify what uh, order of these keys so, so it's like a second level of key and you have if you have here another interleave tables here okay? in this case you, you will have in this inter interleaved table three keys two from this actor key table and one for this on a third level and so on so forth so it's really uh, hard to maintain if in case you often change schema and moving uh, links between tables because it's the design time so it's a it might be very expensive in maintenance let's run application and see what we have here in this case uh, if we create table for interleaved hierarchy also i have to notice that it's different method than we had for regular things so it's a different method to, to generate uh, interleaved tables so please also keep this in mind that it's not uh, the same method and uh, after um, our data come to place we just check the performance and query of queries and it's uh, we are really close to end of this presentation different things that we can use here we, we could see average data for queries that we run recently so this also could, could help you Okay, we have much more tables to create. It takes time. It takes time. So under the hood, uh, there are regular GDBC driver and for some simple cases, it's possible to use, for example, DB unit to create some same sample data and clean up after yourself for testing. Okay, we have interleaved table here. Okay. Okay, now everything is in the place. Just have to wait. Yeah. So the Bosky actor we had this is a previous kind of table. This is a current kind of table, but it's just not filled with data. We just have to wait it.
Okay, I believe it's out. Yeah, the data is in place. So this part of table is the same again. It's very similar. We have just we had actor ID here, but now we have quota ID and actor ID here. As far as you may notice. Do we, we just could start with uh, queries? So again, that, that's what I talked to you about, that you have to um, take care by yourself, by data, by uh, consistency of fields in this case. It's for embedded. You, you in embedded you don't have to care about the idea of quote and in interleaved you have to pass the ID down to another tables. So it's also on your responsibility. And let's run a query. Sorry, I have to turn off presentation mode. Yeah. And let's just try query. Well, the difference is let's open, let's run this query several times. Yeah, and let's run the query from a join case when you have this case, yeah. And just compare the results. That's enough, I believe. Query starts. Okay. It shows on the okay. It doesn't show several queries. Maybe. Okay. Now we have much more information. Maybe it's not updated for because we, we are going too fast for Google Spanner. <laughs> And that's an example of eventual consistency. Let's just check by ourselves again. The square takes overall one point eight milliseconds to almost two milliseconds yeah. and with interleave tables interleave tables like this One point three, one point five. So it's a bit faster, but again, we run a very small amount of we we're working with very small amount of data. But anyway, it's a bit faster. So uh, that's all what I planned to tell you about Google Cloud Span Spanner and maybe you have some questions, please ask. If no, I just 
stop the recording.